So lymphoma is a type of blood cancer and it specifically involves lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cells, which are infection fighting cells in our body. Uh, there are dozens of different types of lymphomas and lymphomas can be classified um, as um, by their cell of origin. So they can be classified as either B cell or T cell lymphomas or Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Anaplastic large cell lymphoma or ALCL is a type of non-Hodgkin T cell lymphoma. There are a few different types of ALCL. Uh, there's systemic ALCLs and cutaneous ALCLs, which primarily involve the skin. The most common type of ALCL is systemic ALCL, which usually involves the lymph nodes and can also affect the blood uh, and organs like the liver, the lung, or bones. We specifically break down a systemic ALCL into ALK positive or ALK negative subtypes. Generally, ALK positive lymphoma uh, can respond better to treatment than ALK negative lymphoma, and ALK negative lymphoma can have a higher chance of recurring despite initial treatment. There's also another subtype of ALCL called breast implant associated ALCL, and this specifically arises in patients who have had breast implants. Finally, there's also a type of ALCL which primarily involves the skin called primary cutaneous ALCL. It's treated differently from systemic ALCL, and for this conversation, I'm focusing on systemic ALCL. Typically, patients um, who are diagnosed with ALCL present with symptoms including fevers, night sweats, or unexplained weight loss, and patients may also notice um, enlarging lymph nodes. Uh, if a lymphoma like ALCL is suspected, doctors will perform a biopsy of the enlarged lymph node. And as this is a rare lymphoma, we recommend that the biopsy is reviewed by expert pathologists whenever possible to confirm the diagnosis. To make the diagnosis, pathologists perform several tests on the biopsy material. These tests include looking for expression of CD30, which is a protein that's expressed by ALCL cells. Pathologists also determine if the ALCL is ALK positive or ALK negative by looking for rearrangement of the ALK gene. If there's rearrangement, then ALCL is ALK positive, and if there's no rearrangement, it's ALK negative. In that case, pathologists may look for rearrangements in some other genes, such as DUSK22 or TP63. As ALCL is a type of blood cancer, our standard of care is to treat with systemic therapies that treat lymphoma cells throughout the body, regardless of where they're located. Most patients diagnosed with ALCL have stage three or stage four disease, which means that the lymphoma is located in different lymph node regions throughout the body. And so we treat with combination chemotherapy. Common regimens can include uh, BVCHP, uh, which stands for brintuximab vedotin, cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, and prednisone, or CHOAP, which stands for cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, vincristine, etoposide, and prednisone. These regimens are usually given for six cycles. Um, patients who have early stage uh, bulky ALCL um, are also usually given six cycles of combination chemotherapy. These patients may benefit from radiation after chemotherapy is complete to consolidate the response to chemotherapy and further prevent recurrent disease. Some patients with ALCL may be more likely to relapse or have recurrent disease. And in this situation, uh, physicians may recommend something called an autologous stem cell transplant. This involves a higher dose of chemotherapy followed by infusion of the patient's own stem cells. Our framework for treating newly diagnosed ALCL has really changed in the past few years, which is very exciting. Uh, so most ALCLs express a marker called CD30, and there's a drug called brintuximab vedotin, which is an antibody drug conjugate targeting that marker. Uh, several years ago, brintuximab vedotin was approved for treatment of ALCL that did not respond initially to treatment or that occurred after the first treatment. In the past few years, there was a large randomized phase three trial that compared um, uh, BVCHP or brintuximab vedotin, cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, and prednisone to a prior standard of care regimen called CHOP or cyclophosphamide, vincristine, uh, and prednisone uh, and doxorubicin. 
And happily, when compared to patients who were treated with CHOP, uh, patients who were treated with BVCHP had improved survival without added toxicity. Uh, so this included both improved uh, time without lymphoma and improved overall survival. Um, so this is one of the, the advances in the field in the past few years that we're all very excited about. If initial treatment doesn't work as well as we hope and the disease does not respond or returns, there are a number of standard FDA approved therapies for relapsed or refractory ALCL. So these include targeted single agent treatments like romadepsin, valinostat, or pralotrexate. And in pediatric or young adult patients, uh, there's a targeted agent called crizotinib that was approved by the FDA for treatment of relapsed or refractory ALK positive ALCL. As ALCL is a rare disease, we also recommend enrolling in clinical trials whenever possible. First, I would tell patients with ALCL that this is a treatable and a curable disease, and we have many different treatment options, including clinical trials, to make the lymphoma go away and never come back. Second, ALCL is not a common disease, so I would recommend that patients diagnosed with ALCL seek treatment at an academic medical center whenever possible. Finally, I would encourage patients with ALCL who want more information or more resources to consider resources like the Lymphoma Research Foundation. We treat ALCL with curative intent, meaning that we intend to make the disease go away and never come back, and our field and possible treatment options are changing, expanding, and improving rapidly, and we're understanding ALCL better and making more progress each day.